Hey everybody, hope you all are doing well, and welcome back to Whiskey Wanders. And today, we are doing a pretty unusual wander, at least for us, which is a wander around a total wine in Woodland Hills, that's up here in Los Angeles, that moreover is a total wine that actually let up on their steely grip of allocated bourbons. At least, let a few of the blend and slip through onto this shelf. Also, there are some great Irish whiskeys that we see, presumably left over from St. Paddy's Day, like the Red Breast 15, and a bourbon with a very interesting mash bill, the Basil Hayden Toast, that could prove that creativity in whiskey is not dead. <laughs> and really, there's a whole lot more that we see. So today, we're going to be talking about the three whiskeys that I thought were most interesting from this wander, whether or not the prices are fair in comparison to what you could get them for at Costco or perhaps at BevMo, and also whether or not they're worth picking them up or, I guess, not. <laughs> now, before we get to the video, if you like these videos, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, if you like the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really <laughs> all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, and we have tons of great stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel to grow and we super appreciate that. But also you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. Or now, let's get down to the video. All right, so let's start today off with a little bit of a whiskey check. And today I'm gonna to be enjoying a whiskey that seems to pop up kind of here and there, which is this Smoke Wagon Rye, which is really one of the first whiskeys that we ever reviewed on the channel. And I, you know, I truly do enjoy it on occasion here and there. And in fact, I enjoy the whole smoke wagon line. I really do like it. But the rye is really interesting because it brings like a whole nother dimension to the smoke wagon family and their palate and how they do things. So I really like that one. Let's see if we can get a pop here. I don't know what's going on here. Must be the weather. And get a little bit of juice. And whiskey because honestly you can never really drink too much of it you can only just drink it too fast cheers now first up today is a whiskey that really needs no introduction it's been sought over it's been fought over and has been thoroughly enjoyed by millions of bourbonites which is the blanton's single barrel or as you can think of it as the original og single barrel whiskey when it was released back in 1984. Blanton's is named after another subsequent master distiller of Buffalo Trace, who had the honorific of Colonel in it, uh, so Colonel Blanton's in this case, who followed in the footsteps of the previous Colonel of the distillery, Colonel E. H. Taylor. And then, of course, there is always George T. Stagg, who <laughs> he didn't have a Colonel in front of his name, but if you've ever tried GTS, I think we would all agree that he definitely should have. Like I said, Blanton's in 1984 was unique in the sense that it was the first single barrel whiskey to be released to the public. Now, to make matters worse, because of the roaring demand for bourbon overall and Blanton specifically, Total Wine usually relegates this most entry level of Blanton's to the allocated lottery that they do quarterly for only their Grand Reserve members. So uh, finding on the shelf here was actually pretty surprising for us. This one specifically, we did end up buying at a Total Wine. Uh, it was dumped on 11 21 2022. Uh, it is from Warehouse H, like all of them. Uh, barrel number 3,287. Uh, proofed at 93, and it is bottle number 136. Oh, also it is uh, letter T. So Total Wine, besides having the graciousness to allow average street consumers to wander in and buy the most sought after bourbon at the entry level, right off the shelf, um, Total Wines is still going to gouge us a little bit. Uh, you can see here that the price that we paid for this blend is at Total Wine was at $79.99, which seems kind of reasonable, especially in comparison to the cost that you would find it at a, like a mom and pop liquor store, which usually is astronomically high. But when you do compare it to the prices that you could find it, if you can find it at Costco, I mean, they had it at $46.99 last time we were able to get it. So that means by Buying this one at Total Wine, we did end up overpaying a little bit over the Costco price by $33, and by a little bit, I mean 41.26%. <laughs> the tasting notes on Blanton's really reflect the now kind of classic bourbon taste that it represents. Blanton's itself tends to be a pace setter at this point in time for all the other bourbons that get judged against it. It has a very well balanced, if not underpowered palate. It juggles things like leather and vanilla and pecan pie filling taste and a really enjoyable sweetness. 
But again, being at that very first level of Blandins, it does have some flaws that come through. Primarily, it's relatively short finish, and it has a sort of thin mouthfeel to it. Again, that's from our notes. The review scores on it that I could find uh, had an average of 87 points out of 100, which I think is pretty suitable uh, for the actual palette on the Blandins, especially if you're trying to ignore all the hype that surrounds the bottle. 87 seems like a pretty good score for it. So obviously that being said, at $79.99, we did end up buying it. I do consider it a buy. I mean, it's not obviously the best price, but uh, one thing is that you don't have to get into and win also the whiskey lottery to be able to get it. And they're willing to sell it at a price that is at least not 100% over the markup. So it is kind of a great everyday drinker that you can get. And if you see it for $79.99, you know, we thought that it was definitely worth buying. So yeah, despite all its foibles, it was a buy. So that is the Blanton's Single Barrel. Now, next up is a whiskey that I see quite often popping up pretty much everywhere. Here, there, all over the place. And it's usually at a pretty reasonable price at that mid-market level. It's another bourbon from the Beam family, which is the Basil Hayden Toast. Now, Basil Hayden as a brand that is part of the Beam family does seem to come out with more kind of creative type whiskeys, at least in my opinion, as it is willing to play with things like toasted barrels or wine barrel aging or even Caribbean barrel aging varieties that you don't often see in bourbon. And I don't think they would do it with good old Jim Beam. I don't think the price point there is there to actually make money on it. And I wouldn't think that they would risk affronting the senses of the Knob Creek drinkers and the Bookers and Bakers and Little Book drinkers by throwing things like that in there. So it has a very unique position within the family. Now, one of the biggest shortfalls of the Basil Hayden, and probably one of the biggest reasons why I continually pass it by every time I see it, even when it's on sale, is because it is ABV'd at 40%. Which, if we can be honest here, just between you and I, there are some great whiskeys out there that are at 40%. Things like the Blanton Takara, the Japanese Black Edition. Uh, a lot of the McAllen's are at 40%. And even Redbreast, uh, the Redbreast 12, for example, is at 40%. But they oftentimes do it because it fits within the whiskey profile. And also because it fits in within the market that they are peddling them in. But in the American market, filled with ABV hounds like myself, and at a mid-market price, the 40% ABV, it's just not going to get a warm embrace from whiskey lovers of America, especially not this one. Now, speaking of price, the Basil Hayden that we see here is priced at $45.99 at Total Wine, um, which is not a king's ransom, right? It's not super expensive, but in comparison to what you can find it at Costco, it's also at $42.99. Or at BevMo, you can find it for $56.99. So the price on it, this doesn't seem to fit kind of where the product is at. It's kind of it's a little too expensive. The good thing about it is that it is not a whiskey that Total Wine really ends up gouging everybody on because the difference in the price between Costco and Total Wine is only $3 or 6.52%. The tasting notes that I could find on it mention things like sweet banana foster, a light flavor altogether, and I guess proof down version of Old Granddad, which I guess it is, uh, toffee, caramel and hints of almond extract. Now out of 100 points on the score, uh, when I compiled them all together, it got 79 points, which, you know, for me, I, who, the one who definitely judges books by their cover, especially while I'm perusing the liquor aisle, it just doesn't seem that appealing, right? At 79 points at 40% ABV, um, it's just not enough to win over an intermediate bourbon drinker like myself. Uh, or even those folks who are just getting into it. Maybe people who are just curious, but yeah. So overall, this one is going to be a pass for me. And you know, I think there's just something about Basil Hayden altogether that kind of rubs me the wrong way. I want to enjoy it, but I can just never pull the trigger on it. Maybe it's because it kind of feels like there's too much flash and really not enough substance to go along with it. And this one seems the same. So for me, this one was a pass. All right, so last of today is a whiskey that had just been on the shelves recently, probably because of St. Patty's Day. But it always seems to be going pretty quick whenever I see it, which is this Redbreast 15. Now, it is out of the renowned Middleton Distillery. It is the mid-range version of the Redbreast age statement lines of Irish whiskeys that they put out. And it's basically just kind of like one step up from the Redbreast 12. Redbreast as a whole is known to be one of the best examples of Irish whiskeys overall. And the distillery has been in business and out of business for the last 200 years or so. The Redbreast 15 is made using the traditional Irish pot still. It is triple distilled and it is composed of both malted and unmalted. 
malted barley. Additionally, it is a non-chill filter and has a nice step up in ABV from the Redbreast 12, which as we had mentioned before, is at 40% ABV, but this one specifically is at 46 ABV. And it is matured in both new and refill oak casts to create a very distinctive mellow Irish flavor. Now this one that we see here at Total Wine is priced at $139.99, which is a bit pricier than what we got this one for at Costco uh, when we bought it for $119.99. And it doesn't seem to be readily available at BevMo. But if we had bought this one at Total Wine, then we would have overpaid in cash by about $20 or 14.29%, which isn't that bad, but you can definitely see that Total Wine, when there is a whiskey that people really like and there's demand for, they really do jack that price up over the MSRP uh, of what we know it can be sold for, you know, at other places like Costco. The ABV on the Redbreast 15 is now at the baseline ABV of 46%. And I'll show you that again there. Uh, you can see that. And the tasting notes on it mention things like a delicious buttery pastry flavor, orchard fruit, a hint of baking spice, and liquid gold silkiness with shortbread, which all sounds, <laughs> that sounds pretty amazing. Again, I love red bread, so. Overall, the scores that I could find on it on average were pretty good as well. Uh, I gave it 88 points out of 100. Uh, which, again, seems pretty fair from the experience that I've had with red breasts overall, although I have not tried the 15 yet. And overall, this one was a buy for us, although it was not at Total Wine. Uh, but it is a buy, uh, especially if you could find it at a reasonable price. The only thing is that it is sort of the middle child of the Red Breast family. So it doesn't get as much attention as like maybe the Red Breast 12 or some of the non-age statement Lestals and PX or the obviously the bigger brothers of 21 and the 27. So I don't think that this one would be the first Red Breast that I would get out of the family. Um, but it is good to pick up if you already have run through kind of the rest of the entry level and younger age statements on your way up through the Red Breast line. So it's a nice bridge whiskey in the family line. So that is the Red Breast 15. Definitely a buy if you can find it for a reasonable price. So overall, there's a lot of great whiskeys out there right now that are left over from St. Paddy's Day, which is a great opportunity to pick up some of the Irish whiskeys like the Red Breast 15 that are not usually available all year round. Also, I'm not sure really what the reason or the rhyme is for Total Wine to put the Blantons actually out on the floor instead of hoarding it for their Grand Reserve. Um, but I'm sure glad that they did because I was able to get a backup for this one as well. So that is it for today's Whiskey Wanders at Total Wine in Woodland Hills. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And in fact, if you like, you know, these videos, if you like the Wanders, if you like the hauls, the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff that we got cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel to grow. Again, thank you so much. Uh, also, it is great for your whiskey mojo, and you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. Now, just remember, if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. <laughs> in this case, it might even be me. All right, everybody, I'm out. Have a great rest of your week, and adios.